Conclusion. We have described and experienced together all the security blocks available across STM32 family. You remember STM32 unique ID? The static protection with WRP, PCROP, RDP, unique contributes, the user CQMM or HDP, MPU, firewall, trace zone, OTF deck, tamper, and the crypto hardware resources and crypto software resources. Just a remark, user CQMM and MPU firewall and trust zone have the same purpose, code isolation. I propose just a little recap about the pros and the cons of each one. For the firewall, code and data protection is done, and there is a unique entry with an, an unique exit point also, and it's dynamic. The constraint, no interrupt allowed inside the protected area, and a RTP2 required is required just to protect the SRAM. MPU, it's available on almost all STM32. Uh, the constraint, we've got an impact on the user code and privilege, and the access control is for CPU only. So if there is other master on the bus, you can access or work around this protection. For the CQMM and HDP, code and data isolation, quite good. Hardware not accessible by a user application. The constraint that is static, so that means at runtime, you can't access any more the CQMM. And finally, the trust zone, which is a more advanced one. Code and data protection is dynamic. It could enhance the product life cycle, and you can debug in secure and unsecure. And the IQ and link just switch from one context to another. The constraint is a software development model that is different. Again, this huge array with all those features and their availability across STM32 series. So. It's something that you can keep in mind and need to be updated when there is new product. What are the next step? The next step is now to understand how to combine those security blocks to build your STM32 security and with a secure boot and a secure firmware update. Thanks for your attention.